up here is a very interesting word, phanerothenai, it's a Greek word. And what it means is we're going to stand all alone in front of Christ. Did you know most people don't like to stand all alone in front of anybody? The most dreaded thing is public speaking, where you have to get up and make a speech and everybody watches you. Did you know that one by one, every believer is going to be waiting in line and the Lord's going to call us up and we're going to come and it's going to be our moment to stand in front of him. The picture is, it says before, verse 10, the judgment seat of Christ. That's the word bema. In Corinth, if you guys go with, with Steve's trip and you go to Greece, the bema was a raised platform where the judge sat up there or stood up there and people came and stood and looked up at him. That's the picture Jesus gives. And what we do is we get to come when it's our turn and the Lord is going to present to us what was left of our life after it went through the fire. So everything you think and do and say and collect and write and all the people, whatever you do with your life, sin is erased. Everything else in life is collected, put in the fire. Everything that was pleasing to God survives. Jesus collects. And he comes to the front of the podium and we're standing there and he said, this this is yours. This is your life. This is what you did that lasts forever. You know what Martin Luther said? That's all I think about every day. Martin Luther lived to be 63 years old. In his 63 years, he got saved and he led what we call the Reformation, a movement. And people say, how did he keep going, facing death threats, facing persecution, facing everything? And he told us, he said, I just want to stand in front of Christ. Do you know, Isaiah is all about how to live this life. The life that pleases God is a perfect peace life. God says, I want you living that kind of life as the world crumbles, as Russia shakes the nuclear saber, as China shakes the, all their Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, Satan, I want you to live that shalom, shalom life. I have it all planned out. I created everything. I know what Satan's going to do. I have revealed the end of the world so you can see Christ is going to win. And all I want you to do with your life is to please God. That's what prophecy is for, toward the wrath of God. Did you know God planned all this? God says, I am going to, in Revelation 18, destroy Babylon, the materialism. I'm going to destroy Babylon, Revelation 17, the global religion. I am going to let out of the pit, we're going to see next hour, the demons. What, what should that do to us? Well, let's, let's look. Look in Matthew 25, uh, or Matthew 24. Jesus tells us what you're supposed to do when you know the world's going to end. Now, Martin Luther, the great reformer, put it this way, and I could summarize everything I'm going to say in his sentence. I have only two days in my calendar. I'm going to live today in light of the day I'm going to stand in front of Christ. Now, do you guys really think about that? You're young, you want to finish school, you want to get married, you want to go off and have your career, you want to have a family. You want to have a nice house, you hope, or whatever. But guess what? All of that's important. But someday, all the things we're planning to do today, we're going to have to stand in front of Christ and explain to him why we did all those things. Now, here's what Jesus told us. Chapter 25. Uh, we, Chapter 25 of Matthew, the parable of the virgins, basically says you've got to be prepared. You don't know when Christ is going to come back. Look at verse 14 of chapter 25. A kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to far country. He called his servants. He gave them talents. What Jesus is saying is, chapter 24 says the world is going to end. Matthew 25 says our life is like we have talents and the Lord wants us to do something for him. And look at verse 21 of Matthew 25. And the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of your Lord. 
Jesus says the whole purpose of prophecy is not to scare us. It's not to make us uh, build a bomb shelter. It's to make us get ready for the day we stand in front of Christ. Now, I already said this first week, but I'm going to say it again. Look at 1 Corinthians 3. This is what happens when we stand in front of Christ. He puts everything, remember I told you the story of Burger King and all that. He puts everything into this fire. And verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 3 says, everyone's work will become clear. The day will declare it because it will revealed, be revealed by fire and the fire will test everyone's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he receives a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he will be saved, but through fire. What the Lord says is there are going to be Christians who live their whole life and everything they live for, all of their collections, all of their hobbies, their photos, all their postings, they put on the conveyor belt. They're not sin, they're just what they spent their time doing. And the conveyor belt goes through the fire. And on the other side, Jesus is standing. And anything that doesn't get burned up because it was temporal and only done for the moment, not for Christ, anything eternal lands in the hands of Christ. And that's what it says is gold, uh, silver, verse 12 of chapter 3. If anyone builds on this foundation, Gold, silver, precious stones, it will endure. The last verse, 2 Corinthians 5.10, and we have three minutes. Here's the moment that it happens. I'll start in verse 9. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. How do you live for the Lord? Simply one thing. Paul says, I taught you how you ought to please God. The only goal in life that lasts forever is me saying, Lord, I just want to please you with my attitude, with my words, what I do with my time. We want to be 2 Corinthians 5, 9, well-pleasing to him. That's my ambition. Why? What's my motivation? For we must all appear. The word all, the Greek word means all. Appear is a very interesting word. Phanerothenai is the Greek word. And what it means is we're going to stand all alone in front of Christ. Did you know most people don't like to stand all alone in front of anybody? The w most dreaded thing is public speaking, where you have to get up and make a speech and everybody watches you. Did you know that one by one, every believer is going to be waiting in line and the Lord's going to call us up and we're going to come and it's going to be our moment to stand in front of him.